Hello everyone, welcome back. This is gonna be memory work ideas, review game ideas, and at home ideas for CC cycle two and week 12. All right, this week for math, we are learning the teaspoons and tablespoons. And so I like to bring in a visual of these things because it's pretty simple to bring your teaspoons and tablespoons to class. And so we just show that three teaspoons equals one tablespoon and two tablespoons equals one fluid ounce. And we sing this to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot, and it sounds like this. Teaspoons and tablespoons, three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. Two tablespoons equals one fluid ounce. Teaspoons and tablespoons. All right, that is math. For uh, English, we are moving on to our indefinite pronouns, and we are continuing with the tune of One Little, Too Little that we started last week, and that will continue and end in next week. And I got this idea from CC Connected, and I will link below all the details of where you can find it. And I sing it all together in my week 11 video if you want to hear the whole song together. But this week, it sounds like this. Everybody, everyone, everything, few, many, more, most, neither. Everybody, everyone, everything, few, many, more, most, neither. All right. For history, we have Tell Me About the Battle of Waterloo. So I'm going to do hand motions as usual for these. These are just ASL motions, and maybe combining some of them are just motions that we use in our timeline to stay consistent with that. So when we say Napoleon, we're going to do an N, Napoleon. When we say Bonaparte, we're going to do a B. Then we have of the French Empire. So the sign for French is to make your F and turn it like this. So of the French empire, we're gonna make an E and move it from our left shoulder down like we're making a sash. Then when we say defeated, we're gonna do the sign that we do in our timeline for defeated. We're gonna take our right hand and push our left arm down. Then we have the battle of Waterloo. So battle, this is what we do for battle. Waterloo, we're gonna make a W and move it like water. And then, by British General Wellington and his allies. When we say General Wellington, we're gonna do uh, a salute for General and Wellington, another W. When we say British, you could go like this. And then, and his allies, we're gonna make our arm like that, like we're doing a sign like we are allies, okay? And his allies. And then when we say War of 1812, we're gonna stay consistent with our timeline motions for 1812. So War of 1812. When we do this, we're doing the sign for bombs. The War of 1812 was known for that. So um, we'll say War of 1812. And then in the United States, this is the motion for United States. And that is how we will do our history with motions. We'll listen to the song, we'll sing the song, and then by the end we'll be able to sing and do the motions together. And those are the motions that we'll use. All right, for Latin, we are moving on to the first conjugation endings, future perfect tense. We did these last week as well, so we're gonna continue on using our arrow crown. And this is to remind us that the first sound of these conjugation endings is arrow, spelled E-R-O, and but the sound is arrow. And we will put on a crown like it's our birthday crown, and we'll sing to the tune of happy birthday, which is the tune that CC puts it to. And so we'll use our crown. If you have one of those battery operated little candles, you could pass one of those around. And then every time it gets to the end, the person that it ends on gets to blow it out and turn it out. That's kind of fun for the kiddos to do too. But that is what we will use as our visual aid as we sing through our Latin this week. For a timeline, we have our hand motions. So we're going to do a G for Genghis Khan. So Genghis Khan. And then when we say rules the Mongols, we're going to salute. We're going to put our right hand flat like this to say we're ruling the Mongols. All right, next we have England's Magna Carta. That is a great charter. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the sign for England, England's Magna. We're going to do the sign for great, England's Magna and Carta. So we take a C and then move it down just like we do for Babylon and other things when we're doing a letter of the law or carta. Okay, then we have Ottoman Empire. For that, you're gonna make an O and we're going to just circle around, kind of making the shape of Turkey. 
with an O. So Ottoman Empire. Then we have Marco Polo's journey to China. For that, we're going to cover our eyes like we're playing Marco Polo. And we're going to cover it and uncover it. Marco Polo's journey to China. We're going to do the sign for China. So we're making, we're pointing to the buttons that are on the coats like we always do in our timeline. So we have a button here, here, and down. And then we have the Hundred Years War and Black Death. And for that, we're going to do a sign for 100. C stands for Century 100. So 100 Years War and Black Death. Okay, the next one is the Renaissance. For Renaissance, it basically means rebirth. And so we're going to do the sign for rebirth. So you have your palm here. Uh, usually it's at your waist level, your tummy level. And so you have rebirth and you take your other palm and you bring it out like you're having a rebirth. So that's the sign for Renaissance. And lastly, we have China's Ming Dynasty. And for China's Ming Dynasty, this is the dynasty or the time where they built the majority of the Great Wall. And so what we're going to do is do the sign for China again. So you have your left shoulder, right shoulder, and your hip that you're pointing to, like the coats. And then you're going to go like you're building. Just put your palms on top of each other, one after another. And that's it for timeline. Okay, last, no, last two. For geography, we have Eastern European seas. And so uh, for this, it's always fun if you can at home or if you don't have allergies in your class uh, to bring in some fishy crackers. You could do it where as you point to each one, you put a fishy cracker in each of the seas, and then you do kind of a show me, tell me. As they tell you, they pick each one up and eat one, eat it as they tell you what place it is, what sea it is. If you don't want to do fishy crackers, you could just sing it to a tune, and I thought it would be fun to sing it to uh, All is Found um, from Frozen. Uh, it's kind of a slower tune, but it makes me think of the seas and the waters and the rivers, and so it sounds like this. Eastern European seas, White Sea, Barents Sea, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Aral Sea, Eastern European seas. And that is how we'll do geography. For science, uh, oh, I guess with that, I should say, even though you do a tune, we still always do where you outline it or point to it and identify it as a class. And then you always have, I always have the students repeat back to me what we've pointed to initially so that they can also show you and tell you what each place is. And then once you've got all that down and you've repeated it and gone over it a few times, then you can sing it and point to it while you sing it as a class. So that's how we use these tunes for geography. Okay, last for memory work, we have science. And for science, we are learning what are some other bodies in the solar system. And so uh, I thought that it would be fun. I have the littles. You could do this with older kids too. But we're going to sit in a circle and we're going to have little marbles or balls that we can roll around as we chant out our uh, asteroids, meteoroids, meteorites, and comets. I think that it's interesting during this phase if you have any way to show somewhat of a visual of these things just so that they can get an idea of what an asteroid looks like, what a, a meteorite looks like, what a shooting star or a comet is, and then kind of just review what each of those things are. An asteroid is a rock, right, that orbits around the sun kind of like a planet, but they are huge. Um, to be specific, they are about a thousand kilometers in diameter. And then we have our meteoroids, which are fragments of asteroids or comets, and meteorites, which are like what we see as shooting stars, which are fragments of meteoroids, right? And then we have comets, which are ice and rock. And comets actually release a gas when they are around the sun, things melt, the ice melts, and it leaves a really long tail after it. So those are just some fun things to maybe point out as you go into it if you have time but we will uh show these pictures of asteroids of meteors hitting earth and what kind of that the big craters that that leaves uh this right here is a comet so i think that there are also visual aids that can be printed off on cc connected that might be another idea to just have handy if you want to and if you don't want to use any of those visuals you could just sit in the circle roll your marbles or your balls whatever you choose and then as you as you chant or say, what are some other bodies in our solar system? Some other bodies in our solar system are asteroids, meteoroids, meteorites, and comets. 
And that's how we're going to cover all of our memory work this week. Uh, I hope that you guys have fun. For review this week, I have two different options that would be fun ideas. If you're wanting something more that would cover all of what you've learned for the last six weeks, you could do something like a game of sequence, a group game of sequence, which is basically where you're trying to cover the entire board by teams and um, you answer questions for each of the weeks. And if you get your question answered, then you get to put a token candy or whatever you choose to use on that space. And you just want to try to the first team to get a certain amount in a row. You could say five in a row. Um, the first team to cover the board, you could use that as your goal as the class. Uh, many different ways to do this. I will post the rules and the um, where I found this on TC Connected in the description below. But this is one great way to cover all six weeks because it covers so much information, similar to uh, the way that Bingo would. And then if you don't want to play a game, I have the littles and what we're going to do probably this week, since we're so close to Christmas and there's so much snow outside right now and it's just the winter season, we are going to build a snowman as we review questions. So each question will be a different thing that they can draw on the board to add to a wonderful, fun snowman that everybody has been a part of adding. Maybe we'll make a winter scene. You can add snowflakes, you can add trees or whatever they think would be fun, but we're going to do uh, build a picture, a winter scene uh, for our review this week, just because we're so close and we're in winter. All right, so those are some fun ideas for review. This week at home, if you would like to do some different read alouds or videos, here are some fun ideas for that. Of course, uh, with videos, Magic School Bus always has great educational videos. This week, season two, episode 11 is all about meteors, comets, and stars. Um, they have one about stars alone, and that's season four, episode seven. Also, Get Lost in Space, if you haven't watched that one yet, uh, that's season one, episode one. Cat in the Hat also has one called Top of the Sky, and for them, that's season two, episode 15. And those would all be great things to watch this week at home. And then for reading, Cat in the Hat has a book called There's No Place Like Space. That would be a good one to check out. And then we have Magic School Bus. If you have that series or could get it from the library, they have one called Space Explorers. And so that would be another option there. And of course, we have our devotionals for um, Indescribable. And there are several that would apply to this week. So there's one called No Match Using What Scientists Don't Know. That's page 196. And then related to our hands-on science this week, we're doing constellations as our science experiment. And so page 54 is about singing stars. That would be a really cool one to read uh, related to our constellations. Um, page 74, page 26, page 90, 68, and 30 are all other ones that you might be interested if you've already gone through some of these other ones. So that is indescribable. If you are looking for fun ideas of things to incorporate in your um, eating this week just for fun, it would be really cool related to science since we're learning about comets and asteroids and other bodies in the universe. You could get some of those edible rocks as a treat this week, uh, like they're eating some of these different spatial uh, rocks. So that would be kind of cool related to history. Um, potato soup might be a good one. History is about the Battle of Waterloo, so that would be a good one. And then I think that is everything. If I think of anything else that I forgot to cover, I will list it in the description of this video. Otherwise, um, I just want to thank you all for being here with me throughout this first half of our school year. I hope that it's been amazing. We have learned so much. And I wish you all a wonderful Christmas and a blessed time with your loved ones. And I look forward to seeing you again for week 13. Bye.